the first question is what is cultural solidarity for you and how can we produce it in these times? Maybe I can start with an anecdote. A few months ago, I was in a public transport in Belgrade in a very crowded bus. And there was one young girl, uh, woman, like 19, 20, and she was looking at her smartphone. And beside her, there were very old people standing, like 70 or 80. Later on, there was uh, a pregnant woman of about her age. And finally, there was a mother with two rather young kids, like three or four. But she didn't pay any attention. She was looking at her Viber, Instagram, whatever. I was a bit far from there, so I was not able to react, but I made a photo as a sort of warning against such a behavior. Um, but I put it on my Facebook account. Uh, I was quite surprised that most of the comments were that she's completely entitled to sit, that if she's capable of finding the seat in, in such a crowded bus, that she shouldn't give it to somebody else. And one of the comments were, was that, bro, this is not a socialism anymore. If you don't take care of yourself, nobody else will. So I was quite surprised in, at how capitalism was successful in brainwashing. This is what Corona pandemic reminded us that such a way of organizing social life is impossible. It's not possible to look only uh, after yourself, if if your if your neighbor, if your colleague, if your seller is sick, then you will be sick too. So, this point out into a new way of organizing society. So the the crucial question is whether we will be able to to do it in another way. Um, there is a famous photo from the Second World War. In it, which appears very often today in social media uh, about American soldiers carrying out on their backs donkeys in a minefield because there are mines everywhere. You have to take care, you have to take care of, you have to carry donkeys. Otherwise, if they step on a mine, you will be killed too. In fact, it turned out that this was not a photo from the Second World War and these were not American soldiers but these are members of the Foreign Legion of France in 1960s. And uh, it was not a minefield, but it was completely exhausted donkey, which was carried out by a soldier. And later on, and it was called Don it was called Bambi. And, and later on, when it, they, when it recovered, uh, it became a mascot of this legion. So, um, conflict, competition, and cooperation are always present in in societies, but the point is that last few decades it was only about competition and conflict. The most two ridiculed um, value, social values were solidarity and empathy, and there is a good reason for that. Those who are marginalized, those who are oppressed for them, the only way to to represent their interests is to, to show solidarity one to another. And on the other hand, for those who are dominant, they would prefer that they their perform they their opponents are as individualized as possible. So there is now a different way opening. So it's it's a key question whether we can use it in the best possible way. What we learned from the crisis, can we develop different post-crisis modes and conditions of art and cultural production, which will allow basic sustainability and reduce the precarious position of cultural workers and artists? I think that the pandemic only made more visible the invariable situation in which artists and cultural workers live and work. I don't think that it added anything new. It simply revealed how precarious it is. It, uh, it is a result, this position is a result of, on one hand, structural changes on the world labor market. At the moment, uh, labor supply is much bigger than the labor demand. And states are not able to control these international companies to force them to respect even the basic uh, workers' rights. On the other hand, I think the problem is this conception of creative and cultural industries 
which is clearly destructive, but still embraced by many cultural workers. I guess that the reasons for that is that when they compare their work, which is part-time, occasional, insecure, and so on, but still it's not from seven to three or two, from nine to five, it doesn't have bosses and party appointed managers that they prefer this this way of working and living. But it it is more and more obvious that it's unsustainable, that something has to be changed. And the change can come only from collective effort. This is not um, easy in terms of artists and cultural workers, which are constantly pushed towards fierce competition on the market. But I, I don't see any other way except through new new networks uh, trying to unionize. It will be different, difficult to to make unions out of people who don't work in the same place in the factory. But it's possible. And this collective response is something that can change situation in the that that cultural workers find themselves in. Does COVID-19 crisis bring forward the idea of social equality, social states, and maybe universal basic income, and how this can be reflected in culture and arts? I think it definitely does. But there is a long way to social equality and universal basic income. The core absurdity of, of neoliberalism is privatization of social spheres which should never be privatized and expecting health care and culture and education to function as profitable activities. In, during the crisis, it, it, it was obvious that those states which uh, destructed their public health through austerity measures, they are the ones which were hit the most seriously by the pandemic, for example, Italy or, or Great Britain. I read somewhere that in, in Italy, they reduced the number of public uh, health uh, beds three times in the period of, of 30 years. And there's no wonder that there were uh, sick and dying people in the corridors. So um, it, it, I don't think that there will be improvement only for culture. I think that there will be a different approach towards these, these social spheres in general. First, uh, when related to, to health and and later on to, to education and culture. But uh, we, should we should constantly be aware how situation in the region is different from situation in the, in the rest of the world or, or in developed countries in the world. We have the, the worst combination of remains of socialism and neoliberal capitalism. So we, our, our, our own problem is not just liberalism, liberal dis neoliberal destruction of of, of public goods. Um, we have something which we could be called uh, captured societies. In these societies, all resources are under control of, of political parties or political oligarchies, which use these political parties. So if you want to, to get a job, if you want to get a promotion at the job, if you want to get the tender, you have a company, if you want to get the tender, if you have a media, if you own a media and you want to get the a grant at the competition, you have to be a deal with, in a deal with political parties. And later on, you have to return favors for the, the resources and services that they provide. So we, 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 we have to be, we are constantly in those, these two fronts. What will be a solution for, for other, for more developed countries, like the bigger involvement of government in all, the, all other segments of, of social life, it can, it can be a problem in, in the region. It can bring more party soldiers in, in public services, completely incompetent, just working for the party and their own benefits. So this is the specificity and we have to be aware of it and constantly keep, mind, keep on our mind that we are fighting on two fronts. What political and policy approaches you would foresee for the future in the field you work or how it should be changed in the future? The way I see it, humanity learns only when it puts its hand on the burner of the kitchen cooker. 
it doesn't really matter if everybody tells that it's hot. It doesn't really matter whether people see that it's hot only when when you put the hand on the on the burner and you realize that it can hurt you. Then there is a, a reasonable expectation that that we can learn something. Uh, it looks to me that what we learn from the atrocity of the atrocities of the second world war is now completely forgotten that we forgot lessons about dignity of human life of of human rights of common fight shoulder to shoulder between people from different classes and and how women can be important in social life and the change that we are hoping for is very much dependent on whether this will be just a three months episode after which we can return to something which is more or less normality or there's no returning back to to normal and this will be a way of life for a, a quite a long period in general i think that this crisis pointed out that neoliberalism is completely unsustainable as a way of organizing social life. In 2008, I was already sure that it will die out. It, it proved that it doesn't just bring enormous social costs, but it can be really destructive for economy itself. But what we saw from 2008 till today, it was even um, stronger and, and careless application of these principles. Um, anyway, I think that, that now it's obvious if you look at the examples from all over the world, even like Financial Times claim that this is not bearable anymore. So, so I think that there is a hope for change, but what the change will look like, this is not something that it will happen um, out of itself. We can We can go into direction which is much more dangerous. We are we are facing real threats of, of of fascism all around the world, no matter how you label it. And on the other hand, there are these more um, open, more human solutions which can lead us into a better direction. But it will it will very much depend on on us how in which direction we will go. And I think that cultural workers and artists can do their fair share. I, I read somewhere that nature reminded us that we are society, but that it's now our turn to make it into a good society.